Okay, so triple S run has been completed. I have managed to get close to 9.5 million score in the new challenge garden, right? And I'll talk you through how I did it, right? So for this one, uh, it's much easier than the previous one. And there are only a few units that you will need. Most of them you will already have if you have done infinite raid, right? So the main ones you will want is Huahi, Perna, and uh, where is it? Fire Hull, right? Now for others, they are sort of optional, right? Uh, what I highly recommend is Celia if you do not have uh, the White Shadow Castle set. I, for example, on my Orbia do not have it, so I have used Celia and she worked pretty well. Right? And another unit I highly, highly recommend is Bisamat because he, I mean, I pretty much only use him for one wave, but that one wave is extremely difficult. And if you have his ultimate ready for when it drops, it will make it much, much easier, right? Uh, another unit that I have used, but it doesn't have to be this specific one, is Wind Paladin. Uh, you will want a provoke of some sort. For cleaves, you might be able to get away with your third skill, right? Uh, but for other summoners, you will want a provoke uh, because you need some sort of a tank to absorb two monsters uh, damage, right? There will be a light fairy king and a dark fairy king. They do a lot of damage. If you do not have a provoke, they will quite literally one shot you with any ability. So Louise was my choice. She worked really well as long as you activate the skill manually. Uh, she will be able to tank it much, much uh, easier. And another unit that I use, but is definitely, definitely not needed, uh, is Wind Zelgadis. Another replacement for this would be the Wind Sylph. Uh, essentially, your goal is to just have one Wind AoE damage ability that you can use in one single wave. Uh, so Wind Sylph, honestly, he might even be better. I just had the Dark Zelgadis build, so I used him. Okay, so now on to the run itself. Okay, and on to the run itself, right? I will be stopping throughout just to explain uh, how to do certain like uh, monster hunting stuffs. I don't even know how to call it, right? Monster hunting strategy, <laughs> right? So for the first three rounds, uh, you really just wanna rely on Lala, right? Uh, her damage is more than enough to clear any of these waves. They only need, I think they die from like 30k nuke and she is doing like 100k, so it's more than enough, right? For the first two waves, it's just mobs. The third wave will be a little mini boss. However, for this one, just your summoner alone is usually enough. If Kwahi defense breaks it, you will probably just one shot it, right? So in a lot of cases, I didn't even bother using Lala's skill or any manually skill at all, right? After that, uh, two more waves of just trash waves, right? These golems are a bit annoying, but what you can do is just stay in the middle and just wait for the rest of the waves to spawn, right? You don't actually need to kill these dark golems for the next ones to come. So you can save them that way and only use uh, Lala's skill when these, uh, once these little blue saplings come, right? Uh, wave 5, again, super simple, stand in the middle. Uh, there will be three waves in total, I think. There's like four mob, four mob waves, three mob waves, then there's two mob waves. And once you clear this one, uh, what you will want to do, this is the final way where you clear it, you use it and here you switch your Lala, preferably to Pisama, right? Uh, this will be another boss wave. You don't actually need to use Pisama skill for this. A Huaki defense break and just your summoner is enough to clear it, right? For most cases. But here, here is super important and here is where Pisama's ultimate is gonna come through, right? This will be a wind and fire heavy wave, and this wave is extremely difficult to kill if you are not using an ultimate, right? So what you want to do is, I'm gonna try to, if I am able to backtrack a little bit, right? Uh, what you want to do is before that wave starts, try to go in the middle, right? And you want to go in the middle because uh, these monsters, like at the top, will follow you towards you slowly, right? Whereas these units will work a bit towards the middle rather than uh, towards the bottom when you're there, right? You want to drag them for as long as possible because you want the ult to drop around here. This is where the Rika will spawn and I think the other Ninetales if I'm not wrong. And these, these will do massive damage. So what you want to do is to drag the first wave of mobs as long as possible 
and once the second wave drops you want to hold in that location so that everyone gets pulled everyone gets pulled by pisamat if uh you do not have enough damage to do a kill you can use another follow-up pisamat skill to finish them off right and right after this wave go stand in the very corner in here because if you stand in the corner the boss will actually not get aggroed by you and in here you want to switch to a provoker right uh what i do is i switch Luis and Perna, I keep Huaki because Huaki will increase your damage a lot and manually try to provoke the boss because if you don't provoke manually he might use the skill fast enough and just one shot you, trust me, like his abilities one shot everything, right? So you don't want to mess around with that. Once you kill the boss you want to switch back to your wave clearing units but I highly recommend standing in this, uh, like on this side because if you stand somewhere in the middle, if you stand somewhere here, the mobs will spawn a bit too close to you and you will not manage to switch them out uh, for free, right? Because uh, you can switch mobs for free as soon as they don't attack you, but once they start hitting you, it's over, it will cost 5 mana, 10 mana, right? So you don't want to mess with that. Go to this side and quickly switch back to some sort of a wind damage dealer. In my case, it was Zelgadis, right? And yeah, I switched back uh, Zelgadis and the Light Celia, so she could cycle my damage and mana. Zelgadis will deal with this super easily. You can also use Wind Sylph, as I said. Pretty much the same thing, right? And I switched uh, Luis a bit early. I could have waited to kill this Occult Girl. If you're having trouble getting through the spell, she'll just use Huahi's skill too. She will do like a quad hit and just easily deal with that, right? After that, go back to the corner so that the boss doesn't aggro you and prepare the same boss team in here. And again, you want to activate that provoke manually. Unfortunately for me, the first one missed, so I lost a little bit of mana. But overall, when that provoke lands, once the defense break lands, you can just spam Perna's skill 2, let him use skill 1 on order, right? After this, uh, you just need a little bit more damage, quite literally just an extra hit, because you only need 20k. Uh, you can use any Huahi Perna skill once, and that should be enough, but make sure to cast it early, because this guy will of course silence you, so you might not be able to use abilities, and yeah. That's how I did it. In the end, I will showcase all of the runes that I used as well for all of the units. And yeah, so here's the runes. Uh, this is my Zelgadis, just regular damage build, right? Uh, Huahi, somewhat damage build. Perna on my second banish damage set, right? Uh, Pisamath on somewhat of a decent set as well. Hua uh, not Huahi, uh, Celia on just a tanky set. Luis, again, super tanky set. Uh, this guy on the best DPS set that I have. And I believe there was one more. No, there wasn't. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the team that I use for 9.5 million in this one. Uh, that will guarantee you maximum rewards. There's no ranking rewards, so you don't need to compete to be first or anything like that. And yeah, that's about it. And peace.